There will be a new moon in Libra on October 15, 2012 at 5.03 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time or 12.03 p.m. Universal Time for everyone else. After the intensely competitive and decidedly heroic download of the full moon in Aries, many people are pushing themselves to compete with their personal best while learning to give themselves space for positive growth. In many cultures, each new moon is considered an emotional rebirth of the self on an individual level and a fresh start on the planetary, galactic, and transdimensional levels of existence. The new moon is the time when the sun, the earth, and the moon are conjoined in perfect alignment and harmony. This is an alignment of energy that causes synchronicity among these cosmic bodies that increases the gravitational tides of the earth's oceans. During the new moon, the alignment takes place with the moon on the side of the earth that is closest to the sun. This alignment is considered an inferior conjunction in earth science. In this position, the sun and the moon rise and set at the same time, and you cannot see the moon because of the brilliant luminosity of the sun's rays. Such conjunctions are the reason why the new moon is the time each month when the sun and the moon are in the exact same zodiac sign in tropical astrology. Fourteen days earlier, when the moon arose as the sun was setting, the moon was 180 degrees away in the opposing zodiac sign at the sun. This is why the last full moon was in Aries and the next full moon will be in Taurus. The new moon in Libra is obviously a time for harmony, balance, peace, partnership, and romance as this is the nature of the scales. Libra is the only inanimate object on the zodiac ecliptic. Through astral history, Libra has been considered either the scales of justice that belong to the goddess Astrea, commonly known as Virgo. There is also an account where Libra is considered to be the chariot of Pluto, and in many star charts, you will find that the scales are a part of what is referred to as the claws of the Scorpius constellation. However, if you bring it back to the earlier civilizations, you will see an immediate correlation with the goddess Mott. In mythology, Mott is considered to be the mother goddess of the highest order in the Kemetic or Egyptian pantheon. According to the Egyptian Book of the Dead, or Papyrus of Ani, Ani is said to facilitate the judgment process of human beings in the Hall of Mott. The heart of the person is placed on one side of the scale, and the feather of Mott is placed on the other side to confirm equilibrium between deeds and intent. If the heart is heavier than the feather, then a reincarnation will take place. However, if the feather is heavier, then the individual can choose to ascend. This account is considered very controversial in mythology, but not as controversial as spell 125 in the Book of the Dead. This is the possible origin of the Ten Commandments from the Bible known as the 42 Negative Confessions. While there is much more to Libra's association with the goddess Mott, be careful not to confuse Mott with Isis. While the two deities are often depicted as falcons, Isis almost always has a throne on her head, while Mott always has a feather upon her head. Many goddesses are associated with these two formidable examples of the sacred feminine through Venus. Names such as Aphrodite, Ixchel, Inanna, Astarte, Freya, Oshun, Ishtar, Hathor, Fortuna, and Nugwa are just a few examples of how well known the principles of Libra and Mott are known around the world. Libra is also loosely associated with the myth of Tiresias, the blind prophet of Thebes who was turned into a woman by Hera for several years after striking two snakes while they were mating. Would anyone like a sip of Haterade? After several years of marriage and children, Tiresias was transformed back into a man. Zeus and Hera wanted Tiresias to report which gender experienced more sexual pleasure. Libra is associated with this story because Tiresias' time spent as a woman was to disseminate a balanced view of masculinity and femininity among men and women on the grid of humanity's consciousness. In astrophysics, Venus is the second planet from the sun. 
This devastating cosmic beauty has only 95% of the diameter of Earth and 80% of its mass. While Venus is not as fast as Mercury, it only takes Venus 225 Earth days to make one trip around the Sun. However, it takes Venus 243 Earth days to rotate once on its axis. Sashay, sashay. This means that a year on Venus goes by a little faster than a day on Venus. Venus is one hot number with temperatures of up to 900 degrees. The planet once known as Aphrodite is made up of mostly carbon dioxide with a small percentage of nitrogen and other elements. She has more than 167 volcanoes that are more active than the biggest ones here on Earth. So Venus gives off all this heat and comes closer to Earth than any other planet, all while spinning in the opposite direction of every other planet in the solar system. In astrology, Libra is a cardinal air sign of the positive or masculine day sign polarity that occupies the seventh sign and the seventh house of the zodiac ecliptic. Libras are often diplomatic, harmonious, perfectionist spirits with an inclination towards high ethics, equality, and justice. Exalted in Saturn, Libras are likely to be adaptable and determined personalities that are often cooperative and congenial leaders. The dark side of Libra can include high expectations and perfectionism of themselves and of others that can be challenging to live up to. Don't be surprised when your Libra spends time weighing all of the options and vacillating between opinions until they reach equilibrium of the heart and the mind. A selfish, obstinate, and self-absorbed shadow exists within Libra. This shadow can cause the mirror of Venus that normally makes them great caretakers of others to be turned inward, resulting in some of the more ego-centered characteristics seen in their opposite on the zodiac known as Aries the Ram. But there is good news. Time spent outdoors among the beauty of nature will help to reset and revitalize your Libra. After Saturn's ingress into Scorpio, let the growth begin. If you were born between August 25th, 1983 and November of 1985, you are going through your first Saturn return. The next few years will be a time to figure out which of your family and friends will support you while you strive to reach for personal and professional goals. This is a time when you make the transition from adulthood to mature adulthood using Saturn's abacus of economic, emotional, and social accountability. In summary, time to grow up. Saturn, Neptune, and Mercury form a harmonic trine, giving dreams the power to help you transcend all of your challenges and bring your desires into the material world. The Renaissance energy being conducted by Neptune in the midst of the square dance between Uranus and Pluto means that the impossible is now possible if you choose to take a leap of faith instead of sticking with traditional thinking. Listen to the alarm clock of Uranus the Awakener as he battles it out with Pluto the Renewal. The cardinal forces of Capricorn and Aries are co-creating through struggle as the planet of Father Luck, Jupiter, has now gone retrograde. Speaking of retrograde, you can expect the slowdown of Mercury in the heavens as he is set to go retrograde in early November. With Mars and Sagittarius squaring with Venus and Virgo, be prepared to face some challenges in your love relationships that will only make you stronger. Communication, tone, frequency, and sincerity will be the keys to success. A tip, exercising together will keep arguments to a minimum. Libra is the conductor of the third tree of life responsible for formation, air, smell, and man. The air sign continuum is very strong right now, especially if you consider the fact that most astrologers believe that we have only officially crossed onto the threshold of the cusp of Aquarius. Since this is 25,920 year galactic spin that is rotating in the opposite direction of the sun, we are on the Libra Deacon. Therefore, love continues to rule supreme. Those of you who understand that disagreements and conflict 
can actually make love stronger with the right attitude will soul train with the dragon of the east and the jaguar shaman of the maya libra aquarius and gemini with the goddess of love hanging out in her home sign of libra your charm and intelligence are harmonizing your community like a superconductor Saturn has moved into Scorpio, removing some of the restrictions from your airy fairy world, making it easier to manifest your dreams. As Libra's fire of air cardinal force is blasting through the octahedron, the potential for thought and sound to manifest into reality is at a peak. Focus on the health of all of your relationships with others. Family, romance, business, and community all deserve your focus and balance. You will not be able to make choices between family and community because you see too much symbiosis between these very important areas. So while you fiercely keep family first in terms of safety, your goal is to create harmony in every place that you dwell. Be careful not to get overwhelmed or you will cross the threshold into an unbalanced dark side that may lead to selfishness, excessive pride, and judgment. This is especially menacing because you are more apt to judge yourself in a loud silence after criticizing others. Aquarius reminds us that you don't have to always like human beings to love humanity. Gemini reminds us that the stereoscopic method of seeing the world always sees at least two sides to every solution. Libra reminds us to distinguish failures and learn from them instead of assigning blame so that we can all continue to relate to each other as equals and move forward while we continually learn. This is your reminder that confusion and indecision are acceptable for a moment, but when it is time to make a decision, remember to trust your heart. Your monkey mind, no matter how process oriented, will fill your consciousness with the chatter of what others may think or say when it is imperative that you stay focused on that which you will think after you feel that you've made your choices. So use your mind, but balance it with your heart and continue to evolve yourself and others by leading by example. Scorpio, Pisces, and Cancer. The cardinal forces of air have begun fall in the northern hemisphere preparing the world for the healing and stabilizing forces of Scorpio. The ingress of the Scorpio sun arrives October 22nd in a fierce wave of watery magnetism that aims to cleanse, purify, and heal you of all your disappointments. This is your doorway to transformation, transcendence, and tireless tenacity. The fierce water trine of the Scorpio sun with Neptune and Pisces gives an extra boost to the Sun's conjunction with Saturn and Scorpio. As the rock lobster element of the Zodiac pushes through Rocktober, we will move beyond healing into rebirth and renewal with the powerful Phoenix force of Scorpio's ruler, Pluto. This will help shift our fantasies into reality. The charm and charisma of the icosahedron lovers of the Zodiac will bring the charge of hope and faith with them as they radiate their mist of magnetic mindfulness and resilience. Don't let your talent for renewal carry you too deep into your attraction towards danger or power. Instead, look for challenges related to putting yourself out there emotionally and socially. Don't be afraid to swim to the crushing depths of emotions and vulnerability and get to know your fears of inadequacy. Now is the time to learn the value of stripping away your shadow and soaring higher into the sky from the motions that fill your emotional oceans throughout the chakras of the seven seas. Your passion for life is at an all-time high and it is important that you have nothing left to hold you down. So it's anchors away while you dive deeper into the sea of progress and tranquility. Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. The adaptable, mutable strength of Virgo has given you the momentum to steamroll right through the equinox. So stay focused and batten down the hatches until you reach the tropical point of Capricorn. This is a time for the cycle of organization and assessment that will lead to a calm and successful holiday season while preparing you for the next cycle of seasons that will fill you with strength and determination. 
Your sense of humor will guarantee you success, provided you recognize that sometimes planning is simply a way to make our cosmic creator burst into tearful laughter. Sometimes planned projects are disasters, and sometimes unplanned projects are surprise strokes of genius. So why not leave room for both? Structure is great to keep the earthy minds of the hexahedron continuum happy and secure, but the biggest upsets tend to bring out the most creative strokes of genius that remind us that we have much more talent than we give ourselves credit for. Capricorn reminds us that having a plan is always best because plans can be thrown away if there is a consensus around spontaneity. But the way to keep Cappy happy is to stay away from the crappy awkwardness of impromptu planning. Taurus reminds us that slow and steady wins the race, even if you are being managed by a zealous mountain goat that wants to win more than he wants to live. Virgo reminds us to focus on doing our very best and not get carried away with the false and temporary prestige of public recognition for tasks you should be honored to do as payment in full just for breathing. Virgo reminds us that Earth is in fact substance and sustenance represented by the bull, touch, and the Earth itself. Time to use your appreciation of innovation and beauty to reinvigorate your daily routine with the principles of art. Rely more on your creativity than your status quo business as usual approach to problem solving. Time to build castles out of love and gold using every resource you have to manifesting a brain with balanced emotional and willful hemispheres. Your pragmatic understanding of life makes you the horizon of eternity, gently pulling back the veil for all those intent on waking for the dream spell of duality consciousness. Keep in mind that survival and craziness are linked, and those that believe that they should never worry about their sanity are the ones who may be certifiably insane. Stay crazy about staying on task and finishing all of your goals. Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo. The fire sign continuum is still flying high after the full moon in Aries download. Meanwhile, the winds of change from the Libra sun bends our fiery trio like cosmic royalty. While change is a good thing, beware of changing too quickly and not establishing that which you have learned from each experience before you move on to the next. Success or failure, you know that the value is in what you have learned and what you will pay forward. With the retrograde of Uranus and Jupiter kicking up cosmic dust, don't expect everything to move at the speed that you have become spoiled with in recent weeks. As Libra prepares to step aside, Scorpio will take control, creating an opportunity for deeper emotional reflection due to the Grand Trine with Ceres and Neptune. You will move towards being inclusive of others and less exclusive with the idea that you will be gaining more fans and further developing your diplomacy skills. The ingenious fiery energy of Uranus in Aries and the ingress of Mars into Sagittarius will produce a lot of original work and projects. This will unblock old plans and create opportunities to make new projects that will bring the collective results that everyone seeks. Besides, you have proven that you don't need certainty. You need effort and passion from yourself and others as a catalyst that will bring forth the cornucopia of progress and completion. Libra is the kinetic art of the zodiac. Libra represents the manifestation of the oceans in the sky as air. Libra is the cosmic scale between male and female energy. This sense of balance is at the heart of Venus's association with the scales of justice that is Libra. The astrological Virgo symbol has the arrow of existence pointing inward, representing the female reproductive organ. On the other side of Libra, on the ecliptic, the astrological symbol for Scorpio is the same as Virgo, only the arrow or barb is pointing outward, representing the male reproductive organ. Since Libra is the only non-living symbol on the zodiac ecliptic, and it lies between polar opposites, perhaps this is an encoded message about the nature of balance and temperance and its role in stabilizing existence. Like the story of Tiresias, perhaps Libra is a vessel of the zodiac 
which is intended for providing measured and balanced experiences in perception for the purposes of developing the collective conscience and consciousness of humanity. Perhaps with both sides to every story in hand, Libra teaches humanity the value of negotiation, mediation, and tactful diplomacy. Like Mars brings his companions fear and dread into war, Libra often brings in equality and understanding. Perhaps this is why all new moons and full moons are tethered to each other as they contain the seeds that balance each other out while our solar system spirals around the galaxy. Just like there is unsolicited caretaker Libra that can become overburdened, there is also the self-serving Libra that embraces Emperor Aries' Martian habits. Perhaps ultimately, like Libra, we are at our best when we are constantly striving for balance. Perhaps sometimes balance is perfect harmony and equilibrium, and sometimes balance is disharmony for long periods of time followed by long periods of time in absolute harmony. Perhaps we should not be fooled by Libra's perceived lack of decisiveness. Perhaps making decisions based on love and balance takes more time. Like we learned with Aries, sometimes our most colossal failures simply pave the way to Herculean proportions of success. With that in mind, it is clear to see that humanity ultimately always has the free will to make choices that are grounded in fear or in love. Perhaps when we trust that any of our mistakes can be corrected, provided that we avoid fear or social conditioning, we can be a more decisive world free from the disabling scrutiny of judgment. In the seventh zodiac labor of Hercules, our hero has to capture a boar, which represents our emotions. The determination or will with the placement of boundaries and control over our emotions brings us into harmony necessary to muster the best possible results for ourselves and our community. Perhaps making our choice from a place of love over fear while tempering our will with our emotions pushes humanity towards unity consciousness, apotheosis, hope, and peace. The labor of humanity can be summed up as balance, harmony, and peace equal freedom. Recognizing the need for balance in ourselves and in others with discernment over judgment of our cosmic brothers and sisters advances us one step closer to freedom and one step further still into the age of Aquarius. Well 